Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at a question from Larry Spywak, KD9EHK, and he asks this question, have you ever used the product called Stuff, a dielectric waterproofing grease on outdoor coaxial connectors? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, how do you keep your antenna and coax connections corrosion free? Well, the antennas are often made of aluminum and uh, the aluminum uh, is, you, you can't ever see in real nature a piece of metal that's pure aluminum because the instant it's exposed to air, the surface of it oxidizes and you get a surface coat of aluminum oxide. Now, as it turns out, oxygen cannot penetrate that layer and so that thin layer of aluminum oxide, paradoxically, keeps the rest of the aluminum safe, okay? So if you happen to scrape the aluminum, it will very quickly form uh, the oxide and uh, it seems to conduct, it's fine. Now, let's look at different kinds of things that you can do. The old butternut antennas were famous for the little compound that was called It's Not Butter. It really did look like butter, a sort of copper colored butter. It was copper, um, copper dust, really, um, in a grease, and so it would conduct. And what we did on the antennas was to coat the part that went down into the piece before it with this stuff, then put the hose clamp on it. And when I took that antenna apart years later, that stuff was still there. I had to break that loose in order to pull uh, the antenna apart. So you can find things like this by calling uh, DX Engineering or Ham Radio Outlet, where you're looking for a conducting um, something to keep uh, pieces of metal uh, in good contact in spite of corrosion around it that the joint itself would stay good. Another place you can use this is on radio plates and stuff like that. Now very often the hardware used uh, with aluminum antennas is in fact stainless steel. Now stainless steel does not rust but you do have a dissimilar metal, stainless steel to aluminum. As it turns out, those two can stay in contact with each other for years without developing corrosion, okay? And if you put that uh, uh, material that I talked about, the conducting grease in there, when you do that, you can make sure that no corrosion gets down inside of there. Now, uh, when you put coax in, you don't want to put anything in there that's going to bridge between the outer shell of the connector and the center pin, because you'll short them, and that's no good. You don't want that. Now, uh, once you put on a, uh, uh, a connector, and here is a uh, SO239 connector, that I cut off. You can see the coax that got cut off there. Okay, you've got this shell and it has to make contact with this to this, so you have to be screwed on tight. Do you see the crud that's developing right there? That would have to be polished off. And then you have this internal part that is screwed in here. Okay, so there's opportunities in some of these places for the conducting grease. But what you want to do, and what you want to note, is that this connection is anything but waterproof. Okay, now you can, when you put them on, put a piece of uh, uh, heat, tube, uh, heat sensitive tubing, heat shrink tubing over this, and that will shrink it down tight. Sorry about that. Uh, that'll shrink it down tight against that and keep all of this water free, but you can still get water in here. So what you want to do is wrap 
this with a kind of tape that you can get from 3M called uh, uh, electrical. You know, I've got a piece of it right here. This is called splicing tape. I got it through Ace Hardware. And what this does is it, it sticks to itself. Now it's got a, a blue backing on it and you have to separate the blue backing because the tape itself will stick to itself and that's about all it sticks to. And so you can completely cover your coax joint up to and including uh, around where it goes, where it plugs into. Cover the whole thing with this stuff. You put a little bit of tension on it to stretch it slightly as you do that and then it will fuse to itself. Now once you do this uh, you'll have to cut it off just by cutting it, peeling it back and uh, replacing it with new tape. Uh, if you ever have to change it that's okay. The stuff isn't that expensive. It's about oh, ten dollars or so for a roll of this. Now, the problem with this tape is that it is not UV resistant, so you will need to do a wrapping over the outer part with electrical tape. Okay, so that's, that's how we keep these uh, uh, things okay. Now, there are non-conductive grease. You don't want anything in your connector that's going to hinder a connection. So, you don't want to put any non-conducting grease in any part of your coax connector. Um, how do I keep my antenna and coax connections corrosion free? Use stainless steel hardware. Stainless steel and aluminum, there, there's a, um, a dissimilar metal scale. And how further apart the metals are on the scale, uh, the greater the attraction to corrosion. Like copper and aluminum definitely will corrode against each other. Okay, so what you do is, and I'll, I'll show you right here, you've got something here, some kind of a loop that's copper. Okay, and you've got a pole that's aluminum. And so you put there will be a screw through here. The screw is stainless steel and there's a washer there. So the copper cannot get into contact with the aluminum but just hits the stainless steel washer. Another washer, probably a star washer in here and a bolt that goes on that right there. These are stainless steel. So you've got copper to stainless steel is okay. Stainless steel to aluminum is okay. That's because these metals on this corrosion scale, copper is close to stainless steel, aluminum is close to stainless steel. Now they're not perfect. Now one other thing I want to talk to you about where uh, you might want to use something on these things. If you put Here's a, a thread and a piece of metal. And if this is stainless and this is stainless, these can, um, the screw after a while becomes very difficult to get out, it binds. So there is some goop that you can put on the screw before you put it in that will still make a solid mechanical connection, but it keeps <clears throat> these stainless steel parts free to move so that you can take these things out without drilling them out. Okay. Corrosion is a topic um, all unto itself. I remember seeing a big on a ship, it was a Navy ship, it had steel uh, base up to the deck and then it had an aluminum infrastructure and they thought they had solved the problem of keeping these things apart but I got a look at it and there was terrible corrosion where the steel and the aluminum came and they were no further apart than that right there and they still corroded 
because of the salt air. Corrosion is a topic in and of itself and you will want to study it on Wikipedia or there's even books written about it if you want to learn more about corrosion. In amateur radio the simple thing to do is to separate copper from stainless steel by either tinning the copper which coats it with um, lead and tin uh, you can put that up against aluminum or putting stainless steel hardware in there. That's generally the anti-corrosion fix for, um, uh, the, the, for ham radio. You don't want to put stainless steel screws into stainless steel hardware without some sort of a com uh, compound that keeps them from sticking after they've been there for a while. They can be very difficult to remove you got to break them loose. It's just a property of stainless steel. So there you have it. That probably a lot more than you wanted, but uh, you've got um, a little bit of a background on corrosion. It's a problem everywhere. Uh, the way I avoid it here is I live in an extremely dry environment. If you put two pieces of copper and aluminum together where no air can get in there, no water can get in there, they'll perfectly happily coexist forever. This is why in um, LMR 400 coax, the main wire in the middle is aluminum with a copper coating that has been deposited onto this uh, metal and it doesn't corrode. The reason it doesn't corrode is there's no way water can get in there because the copper was plated onto the aluminum and there's no way that uh, you can get salt water or anything like that in between those layers. So that's one way of doing it too, but you need to do that at manufacture. So we've been talking about corrosion long enough. So there you have it. If you would like to help this channel financially, you certainly may do so by going to decastlercom slash support and finding a way that works for you. Until we next meet, 73.